In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint Stone Guard Veteran Space Marines for your games of Warhammer 40,000. I'm going to be showing you how to paint the power armor, how we can highlight it, as well as add an interest with some weathering. You'll also learn how to paint the white trim and helmets, the tabards and all the other details like weapon pouches and purity seals. So by the end of this tutorial, you'll have the confidence and knowledge to get your Stone Guard Veterans painted. Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael. And in this tutorial, I want to show you how to paint some Stone Guard veterans good enough for display and for use in games of Warhammer 40,000. I'll list all the paints and brushes I use as well as other hobby equipment I think may be useful in the description below with links to where you can buy them. As well, if you enjoy my content here on Tabletop Ready, then let me know by clicking that like button or leaving me a comment. I love reading them and hearing about your own hobby. If you want to support what I do here on Tabletop Ready and get regular updates to what I'm up to, you can become a channel member or join my Patreon. It really does help me continue to make these tutorials and improve the quality of content for you. And here are all the amazing people who've made this tutorial possible with their continued support. It really does mean a lot. I especially want to thank Maruz, James, Tangol Karanu, Skotama, who have recently become supporters or has donated to the channel. Thank you so much. I want to show you how to paint these Stone Guard veterans because they have details on them that you don't normally see on regular Space Marine units that you might find useful for your own miniatures. To make painting our Stone Guard easier, I've built them in sub-assemblies to get to areas I wouldn't normally be able to get to, and I've also chosen to undercoat them using McCrag Blue Spray for their blue power armour. If you want to know how I get my own miniatures ready for painting, including using empty sprues for sub-assemblies and how to be better at undercoating, I have a separate video on the channel showing you how. And through this tutorial I'll be showing you all the techniques and steps that you'll need to get your own Stone Guard veterans painted, and to make it easier to follow along with, I've split the tutorial up into different chapters. In this first section of the tutorial, I want to show you how to paint Space Marine Power Armour and the techniques needed throughout this tutorial. Even though I'm showing you how to paint the blue power armour of the Ultramarines, you can still use all the skills and techniques that I'm going to show you to paint other chapters as well. And all you need to do is just change the colours that I used. The first thing we're going to do is paint a base colour for our power armour. Here I'm using McCrag Blue for the Ultramarines. And I know we've already started with the McCrag Blue undercoat, but you'll find that the colour from the sprays doesn't really match the colour from the pots. So painting a base colour first gives us the colour we actually want, rather than relying on the coloured sprays. It also gives us an opportunity to get to areas we may have missed with a spray and any time we need to neaten up and clean up mistakes it won't be so noticeable. To make sure we achieve best results when painting our miniatures we can't overlook the basics starting with thinning your paints and I find an equal amount of water does the trick. As well I like to remove some of the paint from the brush on some paper towel first giving us more control over how much paint is deposited. When you're ready, make sure to keep your brush moving and try not to go over any areas you've already painted to prevent creating any unwanted texture whilst the paint is still drying. After you're done covering an area, because we thinned our paint, you'll notice it hasn't covered very well. But that's okay as we can repeat the process and paint another layer. We want to paint in multiple thin layers to build up to a solid colour without losing any details on our miniatures. Just make sure to let each layer completely dry before painting another one. It's really important to practice the very basic fundamentals of applying paint to our miniatures because it really does make a massive difference to achieving a nicer finish and any shading and highlighting we do after will contrast better. Now we have our base colour done, I want to use some Abaddon Black to paint the ribbon under the armour and any ribbed hoses as well. I want to do this now because I know it's going to get messy getting into all these smaller areas and we don't want to mess up any area we may have already painted. Because if you're like me, you're going to have to use some of your base colour to neaten up anywhere we've been messy. I think we're now ready to get started on painting our Blue Ultramarines power armour. And the first thing I want to show you is how we can use glazing to make our armour more interesting to look at. Let's start with some Cantor Blue and to make this a glaze we want to thin it down with twice the amount of water which is going to make it more transparent helping us to create smoother transitions. When using a glaze we want to apply even thin layers working it towards an edge of an area which lets us build up that pigment where we want a stronger colour. We're using this Cantor Blue Glaze around the lower legs and feet 
and anywhere else we think would look good. And we can build up the strength of a glaze applying multiple layers. Just make sure to let each layer fully dry first. We can help smooth the transitions between colours even more by using the glaze of the colour we're transitioning from. So here we're using a McCrack Blue Glaze and working it in the opposite direction. Glazing is a technique that you tend to see a lot of high level miniature painters using, but it shouldn't be avoided just because we think we should be better at painting first. It's a very achievable skill with some time and practice, and it's a lot of fun to do as well. Let's continue working on glazing our armour, switching to a Night Lord's Blue Glaze, making our gradients darker towards the edges. Again, we can create smoother transitions using a glaze of the colour we're transitioning from. Make sure to take your time, and when you're done glazing, you should see how it's helped to make those flatter areas more interesting. The next thing we're going to do is learn how to use a recess shade to start creating definition, and bring out all the different details and panels of the armour. For our recess shade, we're going to be using Night Lord's Blue, and we want to apply this directly into any recesses and around details. This is a more controlled way than an overall wash, so we don't affect any base colours we may have already painted. With the recess shade done, our shapes and details are more noticeable, and we can now work on getting our power armour highlighted. And I really want to go into some detail about the process of highlighting, and the different stages we can do to really make the armour stand out. First of all, I like to keep a brush separate, just for highlighting as I know it'll be up for the task whenever I need it to. As well, I don't tend to thin the paint down as much as I normally would, as we're not looking to paint multiple thin layers, and we want that strong colour. Again, remove excess paint from your brush on some paper towel to prevent those thick blobby lines. The first highlight we're going to do is called a chunky highlight, and for this we use an outdoor guard blue. This highlight wants to be quite a thick line, so we can still see it once we painted our finer highlights after this. Spend some time painting this highlight along any edges, as well as on any raised details and areas. And once you're finished, you should see how it's helped to bring out all the shapes and details of the armour. Our next highlight is called an edge highlight. I'm using Calgar Blue, and this is used on any edges, and to continue bringing out any details. To make this easier, we can angle our brush against any edge, and run it along that edge to create the highlight. For the areas we can't do this, then we just need to take our time painting thin lines where we want our highlights to be. For me, highlighting is one of the most important techniques to really practice and get good at. Because not only does it improve the look of our miniatures, but it also helps to improve our brush control and hand-eye coordination, making us better miniature painters overall. Let's continue highlighting with a fine highlight using Femrisune Grey. And we can use this to emphasise any areas and edges we want to be more prominent. The last highlight we can do is a spot highlight using blue horror to paint little dots in all the corners of the armour where light would be more focused. Now we're done with all those stages of highlighting, hopefully you can see what a difference it's made to the look of our power armour. The other thing we can do for our power armour is paint little scuffs and scratches using Calgar Blue, taking your time in building this up slowly. And then around the feet we can use some Rhinox Hide in the recesses to give the impression of dirt and mud built up continuing to weather and add interest to our marines. Spending that time and effort to add interest and do those cool effects is what's going to really elevate our miniatures, and for me it's the more fun part of painting. Let's finish this first section finishing up the ribbon we started at the beginning of this tutorial. To finish the ribbon between the armour, start with a highlight of Eshin Grey. We can then use Dawnstone to emphasise those curved ridges. We've now finished painting the armour on our stone guard, and you should now have a better understanding of the techniques we can use moving forward. In this first section of the tutorial, I want to work on getting all those different metals painted and make a start on any weapons. Let's start with any silver details using iron hand steel for our base colour. The next thing to do is start creating definition using Norn Oil, so we can start to see the details better. When we're using a shade, you want to use enough to cover an area comfortably, without letting it pull too much in recesses and details. If you need to remove any excess you don't want, just use your brush and wait for the shade to dry. Using shades and washes are a great way to create definition, 
but we do need to be mindful of how much we're using as they can darken and dull any colour we use them over. Finish any silver details and features highlighting them with Stormhouse Silver. So there's two ways we can paint gold for our stone guard, for both decorative gold and more functional gold for bullets. Let's start with a not so shiny gold for any bullets and relics using Retributor Armour. Create definition using some Reichland Flesh Shade. Then finish these details highlighting them with Canoptech Alloy. For the more decorative gold like the chest eagle and any trinkets, start with Liberated Gold. Again we can apply some right clean flesh shade to create that definition. Then finish out all 8 gold details with Canoptech Alloy to highlight details and edges. Now we have all our metals painted, I want to start painting their weapons. In this section, I want to cover how to do the weapon casings, and then later in the tutorial, I want to show you how to do the weapon effects. To paint any weapon casing, start with some Abaddon Black for our base colour. Again, making sure to work up to a solid base colour. We can then use Eshin Grey for our chunky highlight, Dawnstone for an edge highlight, and then finish up with a spot highlight using Administratum Grey on all the corners. Now we've done all our metals and made a start on the weapons, let's move on to the next section where we can work on the more interesting stuff. I now want to show you how to paint some of the details that you mostly find on your Stone Guard veterans. One of the most obvious and iconic things about a Space Marine veteran are the white shoulder trims and helmets, so let's start with those. Our base colour for any white trims and helmets is going to be Corax White to start with. And like our armour, we can make these areas more interesting using the Fenrisian Grey Glaze on areas we think would look good. After we're done with the glaze, we can use Thunderhawk Blue to recess shade and bring out details. Finish these white trims and helmets with an edge highlight using White Scar. Something we don't often get to paint on our Space Marines are those tabards, but it's a detail that can add a lot of character to our Marines, so it is useful to know how to paint them. To paint the tabards, let's first use some Carrick Stone for our base colour. Then to create a definition, we want to darken those shallow folds in the material first with Zandri Dust. Steel Legion Drab is then used where we want these areas to be darker. Once you're done darkening the shallow areas, let's work on lightening the more raised folds and areas first with your Shabdi Bone. And something we can do to soften the transitions between colours, just like we did with our glazes, is to use our Carrick Stone base colour. After we're done lightening those raised areas with your Shabti Bone, we can do a line highlight with Screaming Skull. Let's finish our tabards making the bottom of them dirty and muddy, first using a Carrick Stone Glaze and then a Steel Legion Drab Glaze. This time instead of applying this in even thin layers, we want to stipple this on to give a more splattered look. For any belts and pouches, let's start with Rhinox Hide. Use a Norn Oil next to shade and bring out the shape and details. Now we're going to paint a chunky highlight with Doom Ball Brown. Next paint an edge highlight using Scrag Brown. Then finish any bouts and pouches doing a finer highlight with towel like Okra. And all these steps seem like a lot of work to get your miniatures painted, but I really want to show you what's possible and show you how you can achieve some amazing looking miniatures that you can be really proud of once you're finished. Now we can move on to the final section of the tutorial where I can show you how to paint the last few details on our Stone Guard veterans. I want to finish up the tutorial getting all those smaller details finished and I also want to show you how to paint some different weapon effects. For the purity seals let's paint the parchment with grey seer and the wax seal part with pink horror. For definition, use Thunderhawk Blue in any recesses of the parchment, and Norn Oil over the wax seals. Finish any purity seals highlighting the parchment with White Scar, and the wax seal with Emperor's Children. If there are still things that you need to paint that I've not been able to show you in this tutorial, then I do have plenty of other content on Tabletop Ready. So make sure and go check out all the other tutorials that are available. 
As well as the white helmets, I want to show you how to paint a veteran sergeant's helmet, which is red with a white stripe. Start with a base colour first of all with Mephiston Red. And when you're happy you have a solid colour, we want to paint a white stripe using Corax White. We can use Mephiston Red to make sure we're happy with how the white stripe looks. When you're happy with your stripe, let's use Galvor Back Red in the recesses of the helmet. Then we can do a chunky highlight using Wild Rider Red. After that we want to do an edge highlight using Tau Light Okra. Stone Guard veterans have a few different weapon types that they like to use, so let me show you how to get some of them painted. For any plasma coils start with Temple Guard Blue, then Sotek Green is used in the recessed details, and Baharoth Blue for the raised ridges. To create any muzzle burn, we want to use Drukey Violet, Drakenoff Nightshade, and then Seraphin Sapia. I like the edges with Stormhouse Silver. Even though painting these Stone Guard veterans are very similar to painting other Space Moon units, they do have a few extra details that make them a lot of fun to paint. So let's see how they turned out. Our Stone Guard veterans are now finished and I hope I've been able to give you the confidence and knowledge to go away and paint your own. I've got plenty of other tutorials on the channel, including plenty of other tutorials to help you get other Space Marine units painted. I really enjoy making these tutorials and I hope you find them useful. You can really help the channel by liking the video and commenting below. You can also support me at Patreon which makes a massive difference in helping me make these tutorials. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on future content and I'll see you in the next video.